There we go. Good afternoon. Let's see if we have um, family joining us. It is 12 o'clock Sunday. Sunday of, there we go. Got some people watching on this Sunday of 50. Sunday of 50 of Pentecost. So uh, <clears throat> let's see. This is time for questions and um, comments. So feel free to, to share your questions as we uh, I'm looking in. So, uh, I see Zuline. Charlene is there. Charlene Low. Mfro Low. Uh, yeah, they've been married for. Uh, yeah, how long is it now, Charlene, that you've been married? Um, Charles von Fallenwerfen, our youth pastor is married today i think seven years so it's his seventh anniversary today all our young folk are uh, now almost seasoned seasoned in uh, in uh, marriage and going through the years of experience already even our youngsters are are doing better than uh, in terms of making a success of marriage than many old people who have uh, divorced multiple times. So God is raising up almost two years, Charlene, almost two years. God is raising up a, a, a generation of young people that are of a different spirit. <clears throat> That's my wife making a noise at the background. It's me. Um, always making a noise just a few minutes after 12. It's okay. So that she can bring cookies. You can bring cookies. Can, Look. They're going to fall. Oh, Lord, <laughs> forgive her. It's dark chocolate. And help me. It's dark chocolate. Okay, so almonds. we have cookies. I'm just And uh, yeah. morning, Ivan. No, it's uh, afternoon, it's Ivan. Afternoon, babe. In South Africa, at least. <clears throat> Isn't it nice that on a Sunday you can sit here without having shaved? <laughs> That's a uh, different life we're living nowadays. Normally, on a Sunday you'll be all Guess you know, shaved you know, and shined. You got, you mean, Not much shines. Just spit polish, you know. She spits our polish. Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. All right. What What is the question? Deli. Deli. Yeah, I can't it says see more. So tell me oh, what okay. the more is. I am getting there. Sorry. I'm just. You also know <coughs> we're going to do a, a joint communion. Okay. And uh, as he knows that we've done it in families, let me just get it up. Um. Please, when shall we have another joint communion? Although I believe we all have within, within our families, we had a joint one during this lockdown. Yeah, so um, that's a lovely idea. Yeah, we can we can do it again. Um, obviously, the the power of communion is actually in the word common union, and that is in the in the connecting with those that the Lord has joined us to as part of the body. So um, it's not just something that we, we do as ritual, but it is something that we are to do as a, as, a, as a celebration of the union that we have in Christ. So um, that's a good one, uh, Delhi. We will do that. We will do that soon. And obviously we encourage you <clears throat> now that you can, um, make proper arrangements to uh, gather with those that you're in fellowship with and uh, we can share 
communion there, of course, with the proper protocols as required by the government. Okay, Ivan says, Hi, Pastor Peter. Explain <coughs> a bit more about sent ones. I understand what is meant by it, but there are those who don't understand. Okay, good. Should we get into it straight yeah. away? All right. So, <clears throat> I, I see there's much um, opinion about uh, the Word of God being uh, just, you read the Scripture for yourself and um, you figure out what it means and um, that is sufficient. When, in fact, um, the Word of God is alive and it is active. <clears throat> it's not a stagnant um, letter that uh, it's not dead letters that was written and when you read it all of a sudden um, you have full understanding of all that is hidden in God. There are hidden secrets there are the things in God that he brings into the earth at very specific times. So, um, those, the word, the sound of heaven, so to speak, that echoes into the earth, as I, as I shared this morning. The sound that echoes into the earth echoes through um, instruments, through vessels, through trumpets that have been refined uh, in heart, in their bodies, in their, in their, in their attitudes, in their minds, in their souls, uh, to be a, a vessel that can not only ascend and descend to heaven and um, receive from God uh, the secrets of heaven that are to come into the earth at this time, but to then make that known to proclaim so to speak a word in season so as we know there are things that god is doing in the earth right now there's things that god uh, does at any given season that is unique for that time so it's not chronos time we're talking about kairos the things the time when things come into the earth as god has planned or has ordained it. So, to bring those messengers, to bring those messages, God has prepared um, those who, who, whose lives have been refined to carry it. And God appoints such apostles, sent ones. And um, very often we read uh, in Scripture about angels and um, mistake that to be um, heavenly hosts, angelic beings, when the word angelos means sent one. And um, I do not believe that angels, uh, angelic hosts, bring the word of the kingdom into the earth. I believe that is through sent ones, uh, that God has prepared bringing words in season to proclaim what God is doing and um, that same passage of scripture could have been read years ago by everyone and it not be understood till the kairos till the time that God is appointed and then he releases it through sent ones and this partially is how faith uh, is uh, comes in our hearts um, faith for what God is doing in this season to arise in our hearts comes by hearing from sent ones, those that God has prepared. It doesn't just automatically arise in your heart because um, the understanding of what God is doing comes through those that God has prepared. And uh, these are the, the gifts to the church, gifts of apostles. And um, I believe God is raising them up. Obviously, within our household, 
um, Sam is the, the, the seal of apostle over our spiritual family, but we certainly recognize the, the apostles that God has raised up. Sam not being the only voice, um, but even as they share with each other, there is a common sound coming from the true apostles of what God is doing in the earth. And it is a unique sound for right now. Um, and uh, those, those are the, the, the voices. At the same time, God is also, uh, Ivan, at the same time, God is also cleaning out house. He's also um, exposing false prophets. And those who proclaim um, sweet messages that people that tickle people's ears, so to speak, that people want to hear, but it's not what God is saying. They do it for various reasons with, with different motives, and God is judging that. He's exposing that. Um, he's, he's uprooting that. He's shaking that. It's part of the shaking. And uh, that's what we're seeing in the earth. The, the true messengers that God is raising up, sent ones that are bringing a word in season, um, very often, uh, because they do not they do not speak to the world, they are not called to the world to tell the world to repent. They uh, speak to the church to tell the church to repent, to change the mind sets in alignment with God. And um, part of that is a cleaning up within the house, where judgment is beginning in the house of God, and much of the falseness is also being exposed by God at this time. That's a long, long answer, longish answer, but that's partially what I mean when I speak of um, sent ones. I'm referring to apostles, and within, within our household, uh, we do receive the grace of apostles from, uh, from true apostles, like Thamu Naidu and, and um, uh, Dr. Segi and, and, and others, but... Um, God is raising up the true, and uh, he's also exposing much of what is uh, false. And, and you'll know it by the spirit of this world, by the, the spirit of profiteering, uh, the spirit of manipulation uh, to, uh, to achieve things that is not representative of the nature and character of God. All right, so there we go. We've got quite a few uh, that have joined us. Why is mine not good? Good morning. Updating. So if you, would, um, if you would ask questions, we will see if we can at least um, partially address them. If not, ask for clarification. This, even though we have many uh, precious, I see... Uh, Liam Barnwell uh, is joining us. Hi, Many Liam. of the, the household of God, um, of the corporate son that are joining us. Um, but obviously, this is not um, a promotional ploy to try and attract viewership. This is, um, this is a service particularly f uh, for our household to clarify or to speak um, or even to get to know each other. So... Um, if you want to ask questions particularly uh, pertaining to, to our house, um, our spiritual house, you're welcome to do that. And I am explaining things in the context of what we in this spiritual house should understand. Um, not everyone um, in the church necessarily understands um, what I'm saying because uh, we uniquely have been prepared um, those of, of the tribe of, of, of Sam and those of the tribe of, of Thamu and of Dr. Segi, um, these things will be uh, very familiar. It, even though it's new in the earth, it's very familiar because it's, it's a sound that resonates and echoes um, in the hearts of those who are of uh, those tribes. As I say, God is, is raising up throughout the earth um, this he is doing it in preparing for himself a people uh, the corporate son that will be an accurate representation of who he is so as he's doing this 
um, this sound will be very familiar. It will, it will ring true, so to speak, in the hearts of those that God has been preparing, um, have been receiving this message for some time now. For those that this is new, um, there are many in the house of God that God is drawing in and preparing. But even though it's a new sound, it will resonate in their spirit. When, when we buy into systems of this world and uh, we are manipulated by systems of this world, um, that spirit of the world will push against uh, that which God is doing in the church. Because we, the church, we, the, the corporate son, we, the mature, becoming the mature son of God in the earth, uh, are the biggest threat to the systems of this world, to that which the enemy is planning to do through all the systems and the systematic controls that we're seeing in the earth. Uh, the biggest threat to that spirit of the Antichrist is the true church. So um, whenever we've bought into the systems of this world and we've aligned ourselves or depend on the world and the systems of this world, we love the world, um, then the love of the Father cannot be found in you and, and that irritates the kingdom message. What God is doing in preparing his church uh, irritates those people because they've still aligned themselves and they've still bought in and depended on... Um, the systems of this world and uh, so that's where the conflict starts coming that's where the that's where the the rub happens many that are christians but um still depend on the world and the systems of this world do not necessarily uh, like the message of the kingdom because it it rubs them up the wrong way so to speak yeah, so Ivan says that those that believe that the era of the apostles have long ended. Well, there's a lot of things that people believe, um, but that's not going to change what God is doing. Uh, in every epoch, in every season of God in the earth, um, these are the Kairos times that we speak of, when God brings certain things into the earth. Um, every time throughout the history of the church, God has raised up apostles, sent ones, that have made known that season, that have sounded forth the trumpet, so to speak, of what God is saying in that season. And not to say that these men are perfect, in any, in, in any sense that, that we are looking to them as the perfection. Uh, many of those apostles were um, restricted in their vision only to see that which God was showing and revealing in that time. Um, but God has always used apostles um, because uh, it is how God brings into the earth what he's doing in the earth now. So... For those that don't believe in it, they will tend to go back to the letter of Scripture and they will, they will live in the same darkness, a, a void of revelation as the, those in the dark ages because they have no illumination, because they do not, uh, uh, they do not receive grace of apostles. And um, when you receive an apostle, you receive the, the reward that comes with an apostle. Um, if you do not believe in apostles, of course, you, you don't receive that grace. You are restricted in the, in the illumination because um, you, will be, you will be stuck with just trying to figure it out without the grace, the gifts of God, the grace gifts of God uh, to the church through which he brings these things. And we understand that there is an ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. It is not um, something that was, well, there's a book, uh, good luck in trying to figure out what it means. 
No, God is const constantly bringing into the earth understanding of his ways, the mysteries of God being made known in the earth. And um, yeah, so God is using, God is using apostles. Uh, apostles are not what man appoints. We don't appoint apostles because we like their, their looks or we think they preach well, so we appoint apostles. No, God appoints apostles. Uh, it's God's gift to the church. All right. What's Colin, Colin say? Good day, fam. How does it? How does level three look like in the mother city? Are the case numbers dropping? We're on level two and only have one active case of the pandemic. We are having our first service back next week <clears throat> in New Zealand. Yeah, Colin is a is an old uh, son of Lighthouse many years ago, and he's been living in New Zealand. Well, Colin, we only go into level three tomorrow, actually. Um, they they say that Cape Town is is uh, is a hot spot. All the surrounding areas around Cape Town regarded as hot spots, and so they have kind of a keeping a watchful eye on the numbers in Cape Town are higher than um, anywhere else in South Africa. Um, schools are supposed to start tomorrow for matrics and and grade sevens, uh, but we don't know what it's looking like. Uh, the the case numbers are drop are not dropping. Um, in fact, the the case numbers should sign significantly rise, um, and we're expecting that. Uh, everyone's expecting that. I think anyone that expects the case numbers to drop now um, doesn't understand the nature of of um, the curve and even uh, herd immunity and all of that. Um, we see that in New Zealand they've just about have no more cases left and that's great for you. We still have to go through those processes till we um, develop those immunities. Uh, many people are happy at least just to get out, yeah. uh, be able to get to work. And, we haven't and, given the chance to develop yeah, we'll see, immunity. We'll see, uh, we'll see in the next couple of weeks what, it, what level three looks like. All right. No Questions? Questions? No, nope, there's no more. That's my All right. I see this. Hey, Jessica. Hey, Jessica. Oh, there's Cora. Cora and Mark, dear friends, <coughs> dear friends of ours, been friends of uh, mom and dad for many, many years. Probably some of their best friends. So uh, good to see them. All the New Zealanders joining us. I see Sunette has, has, has joined us. Um, Susie says she can't see you, Charlotte. Yeah, because you don't let me get near you. How comes it near me, baby? Come scoot in yeah. by me. That's my wife. You can get half my face. Hello. <laughs> okay, do you want me to like scoot that back? That you're strangling my neck. Okay. <laughs> just, sorry, I'm just going to... The red finger you put that on. was my finger i'm sorry there is that better okay yeah now you can see us yeah, yeah. oh look at my finger but now i can't read it yeah but i'm reading it okay Wait. all right there are no questions alfreda not as alfreda funny 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 let's see who else is there jessica sanette susie that was just me answering okay. Susie's question. All right. Any any questions, guys? We um, we are looking at. Um, it doesn't have to be theological. Charlotte hopes that it's not all theological. Oh, I don't mind. I mean, but, I'll just start painting if it goes too theological. But uh, ask, Hi, Cora. ask us some questions. Oh, Karen says, "What interesting new skills have you learned or developed during this lockdown?" Me. Well, his is obvious. He's been posting it all over Facebook. Uh, <laughs> you have. It's a good thing. <laughs> My wife is jealous. She's jealous because uh, I'm, I'm impulsive, jealous. and when when no, not when I want to do something, I just I do it first, and then later on find out how it was supposed to be done. Mm -mm. 
Um, and she's got a very methodical way of first doing all her research to make sure it's right. So um, I, I've finished probably three paintings mm -hmm. and, and she, she's kind of laid the foundation for one. Well, part, part of it. But I'm fine with that. I yeah, like it. But don't get jelly now just because of that. I'm not jealous. I'm going to put yours on Facebook too when you finish. Um, when you finish. No, it's not your job to do that. But my wife is an artist. She's been, she's been doing different artistic stuff for for years. Um, so, in answer to your question, Kerwin, um, new grabbing not just yeah skills. I guess developing uh, an artistic skill. I still can't draw, <laughs> but. I figured some of you that, that, that are on Facebook saw my lilac breasted roller. Is that what it's called? I know it was a roller bird. Yeah, that, that bird, lilac breasted roller. So, uh, because I can't draw like Charlotte, Charlotte will just look at things and she can sketch it out. I can't do that. So, mm -mm. I literally took a photo that um, we took in Kruger Park. And I put it big up on, on Charlotte's laptop, laptop screen. screen. And then I put like translucent wax paper over that. And lightly, not hard, not, not pressing, lightly. He keeps saying that. <laughs> used a cokey on the wax paper to trace the outlines of, of the bird. So that I could try and replicate that onto the onto the canvas because I can't draw uh, and and get proportions nice like Charlotte does. So so that's how I cheat. I know of some I won't say who because that won't be nice. But mm -hmm. I know some incredible artists, like incredible. They've got like their stuff is their gift is ridiculous. Like world I could never do that. World class artisans. Kind of looking mm. Uh, paintings and, and, uh, and style, but they also can't draw and literally um, use transparencies. I don't know if it's that they can't draw, it's just well, because of the scope and the measure of them. They use transparencies on, on their canvas to, to kind of sketch, sketch out the basic the, the outline. So mm -hmm. I don't feel that, I'm not hating. I mm -hmm. don't feel that bad. I don't feel that bad that I also have to cheat. I don't have transparencies, but <laughs> you need a machine. And you need a copier, and you need all. Mm. We don't have space for that. The quality is not very good. Huh? I know. I don't know why. It's stupid. Of our video. Oh, it's one forty-four. I don't understand why. I'm not. I'm not normally this um, hazy. If my, if the video comes across that I look hazy. I'm... No, it's our internet. <clears throat> it's been really dodged. Okay. All right. Morning, Juan. Uh, Juan is, is, uh, joins us. Even in our gym sessions, I want to know: Did you actually finish six reps of uh, the the M rep on Friday, or were you busy with your sixth one, Jean? Um, because to do jumping jacks that quick is almost impossible. But good on you for keeping up. For those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, we have a gym session to, together. Uh, we have a gym session Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 2 p.m. if you want to join us. Uh, okay, Joanne jo says, Juan, as uh, Shiva uh, says, good afternoon. Uh, oh, want to apologize. I completed five sets on our last yeah, training yeah, session. Yeah, 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 I thought six. so. Almost six. <clears throat> yeah, I was also busy with my six. I equaled your... I equaled you, Pastor Peter, looking forward to the next one. First question. After okay, no, no. We'll get to John's questions first. Before him is, is um, Step five. Jessica. Oh, I didn't see Jessica's. And Colin. Okay, let's just ask, oh, okay. ask, answer Colin's quickly. How long does it take you to complete a painting? I didn't go to art school. He didn't go no, to art school. He would no. never. I couldn't even take art in, as a subject <laughs> in school because I couldn't do those basic things. But I am artistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've, got, I've, I've got creative yeah. stuff. Um, I didn't so that, take that I lilac, took it in school. <clears throat> that lilac breasted roller, I literally completed um, when when 
the he did it in a day. When, no, when the ministers were giving their briefing about what oh, level it was three, so boring. it took so long and it was so boring. I literally competed hours. the entire oh. painting um, during the briefing. Not the sketch, the sketch I did the previous night, but the entire painting. But see, that's all the different. Even <clears> when I do acrylic, I'll take days to finish it. Days. And with the oil that, the, oh, Kerwin, that was the answer to your question for me. I'm learning how to do um, oil painting. And I've realized it's, it's, it is methodical and it's layer upon layer and there's a whole technique to it. So I've, I've figured out the technique and I'm trying to make sure that I don't muddle the colors. So mine's going to take weeks. <laughs> And I'm fine with that. I but actually like it. Last it's, week she had a sketch and, and, uh, and she's got like she's got done. an ear now. She's got an ear because uh, that's the two next ears, the, the next layer. Yeah. So that's oil, that's why I don't know. I you don't know, know how to I can't I can't take that long. Oh it'll kill me if I have to wait for long, long, long things. Jessica, for. what does it mean <clears> by taking the kingdom violently? Ah, oh, that's a yeah. good question. That's a good question. Yeah. I'm glad you're answering that. Okay. So, Jessica. Yes. Here it is. Must have bring up Sam's note. No. Oh. <clears throat> so, we are in a, in a very real war. Obviously, spiritual warfare began the day you were born again. Because the enemy has always wanted to come against uh, Christ being made known in the earth. God revealing himself in the earth through son. Because um, he wanted to be the one who would be son. And he's not born of God. No angel is born of the spirit of God. And he, even though he was a wonderful, uh, a glorious cre creation with many splendors, um, he could never be son. And so that's partially the thing that he hates about us, that God chose us to be son. So ever since you were born, the enemy has always uh, been at war. And the war is that he knows how to manipulate the soul. He knows how to um, pull the strings by creating systems in this world that appeal to the soul. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. Um, the soul's compulsion for provision and protection is what the enemy uses to wage war. Spiritual warfare is not saying shandai, shandai, and praying in tongues and, and raising your voice uh, at the devil. Spiritual warfare is living by the spirit um, in, in, uh, as opposed to having the soul... Uh, dominate and and rule when you've trained and disciplined your soul to blindly follow the lead of the spirit um, that is part of the of the of the warfare so this is war it's a violent war and so it happens on our level on a personal level that you learn to live by the spirit uh, so that you do not fulfill the lust of the flesh the enemy doesn't have a hold on you you deal with the strongholds of the enemy in the soul. Uh, but on a, on a macro level, on the, on the grand scale of things, it is uh, the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of light that are um, opposing each other. Not that the enemy is, is a competition to God. Like I said last week, uh, um, he has a time that God will allow him to do what he needs to do and what uh, needs to happen in the earth. <coughs> Much of that is because of the, the church that needs to mature. And part of the maturing is learning to live by the Spirit. <coughs> so, you want some water? The, no. the okay. warfare is this. The warfare is... That God is raising up a church that will overcome. The violence, the violence is that we are not timidly on the retreat while the enemy is um, doing his thing in the earth. We are not sitting 
placidly and complacently on the sidelines while great darkness covers the earth. We are at war and how we go about that war, how the kingdom of God is being taken by force is that we are being equipped by God to be a mature son, an accurate representation. And once we come to a place of maturity, I believe even one of the next phases is going to be a great demonstration of, of power. God can't entrust the administration of the things of the house to immature sons. But as God is bringing us to maturity in the house, there's a, a taking of ground um, that, is, that is aggressive thing. So we, we know that um, God says, um, Christ proclaims, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. So that's not, that's not a defensive picture. It's not gates are moving and coming against us. Gates are, are, are stationary. Gates are um, that which we come against. We come against in taking, taking ground by authority that God has given us. And with that authority that we have, um, we are coming against forcefully against the gates of hell. There's no power on earth that can resist the power of God to rescue from darkness those who are captive by the, the, the lies of the enemy. So God is giving us the power not only to be the standard in the earth that will overcome the enemy, but also the standard to which the world can be attracted where their systems fall apart and when their world starts falling apart, that God has raised up a standard by which they will see who and what the standard is and come to that. And then we have the power to rescue them out of the clutches of the enemy into the kingdom of God. And that is a violent action. And the kingdom of God is taken by uh, those violent men who take it by force, uh, thrusting those who were captive by the enemy's lies into the kingdom of God. Okay, what's his mom? Okay, your next question is by Robert Salvi. No, there were questions No, no, before. no, but I said let's do the singles and then get to... The you, singles and then the doubles. The, 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 it's not doubles, it's like five. Okay. Um, is it better to give our knowledge to stressing people... What? Is it better to give our knowledge to stressing people in this time, or shall we rather live by example for some um, don't understand what we know? Yes. <laughs> okay. So, so um, knowledge is one thing, right? Um, God has given us his spirit, the spirit of God. And we know it's the spirit of lordship, spirit of wisdom, spirit of power, spirit of counsel. So having knowledge is one thing. Wisdom is knowing what to do with it. Mm. Wisdom is knowing when to keep quiet because um, when it amounts to pearls being cast before the swine, so to speak. When people don't have eyes to see and ears to hear, um, it, is, it is not wisdom to try and convince them or debate with them with that which you understand, which is knowledge to you. Um, in that case, there needs to be a demonstration of power. They need to see um, that which is you speaking about, lived out in your life. And that's why... That's why I say the role of spiritual fathers is so important that people can see these things lived out in their lives, not just hear it preached in a sermon or spoken about in terms of theology or a knowledge of a subject, but that they can see it lived out in the lives of people. It's also the way that I said we should not listen to strange voices because um, we don't know their lives. We don't know their lives. And unless those lives are lived out before us, um, you can't receive what has been said 
because the word of God is made, becomes flesh, lived out, incarnate in our lives. And when that is truth lived out, that's what the world will see. It's not that the world hears of uh, a city on a hill. They see the city on the hill. So, yes, part of, of that, Robert, is, is not trying to debate with those who don't have eyes to see and ears to hear. But let them see it lived out. When their world is falling apart, when their marriages are falling apart, when there's racism all over the world, and the whole world we see now on television says, stop racism, they've got no ability to stop racism. They, you cannot stop racism in the world. The only place you will see racism overcome is in the house of God, in the kingdom. And that's the living out of it that uh, we have to we have to do. I, I'm sure you've heard the old um, adage that people don't um, they don't necessarily uh, care about what you say. They want to see how how you live, and uh, that the gospel that we preach is by a demonstration of our lives. Okay, let's see. Okay, let, let's get to one of Joanne's questions. And then Joanne we'll, has and questions. And then we'll go to <clears throat> Perwin's question. Okay. Uh, he says, this relates to the teaching of Sam's blockage removal session, mm. number 13 conclusion, mm. that they are created and we have authority given to God. One, to destroy them with God's angels. Two, cast them into the Abbas Tartarus. In Jesus' name, we can. Please explain more. Sorry. I can't, that they are created and we have authority. Be, uh, and we have authority given by God to destroy them with God's angels and to cast them into the abyss, Tartarus, in Jesus' name we can. Destroy them. What's the them? I just want to I, see. I guess the demons, maybe? I don't know. So obviously, um, that which you stand under is that which you represent. So if you are the timi, if you are at rest under the authority of Christ, to whom authority is given, of course we can we can um, exercise that authority in in casting out any spirit. Um, the place of um, um, bringing uh, uh, demonic hosts to uh, what did it say to f to f to cast them into the abyss. Oh, and, okay, baby. Just, abyss. Sorry, I didn't. He spelled it wrong. I'm sorry. That's why I didn't. So the <clears throat> that that is not that is not for now. We will we will be part of the the victorious church through whom God will put all things in, in, in on display. And and you will see as you follow Sam's series a uh, series now of who exactly is on the throne of God <clears throat> and where we fit in that. That we are actually the very much a part of all that God in creation is going to do in putting his power on display and authority and dealing with it. But for now, um, the casting into abyss is not is not the business we're about. For now, we are about we have authority over the enemy, but we are not going to prevent the enemy from operating within the realms of the earth. You have all authority over your faculties and over those that the Lord's given you, over your sons and spiritual sons, <clears throat> to take authority of ever every spirit and over every lie and um, evict that. But it is different uh, than uh, what will happen when all things are said and done and, and God finally um, puts the enemy in his place. I, I'm, I'm hoping that that explains that. I'm, I'm not quite sure um, what you were referring to in session 13. I'll have okay. to go and look at that. Kerwin asked, <coughs> explain how the message of the cross is power of God to those being saved. Okay. The message of the cross. 
So, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb. Oh, sorry. He says, I'm reading salvation as power like a horn. Can salvation be a weapon? My bad. Okay, what's the question? So, explain so? how the message of the cross is power of God to those being saved. I'm reading salvation as power like a horn. Can salvation be a weapon? This is Crowan. Okay. My bad. So, salvation, as we said, the grace for salvation is being rescued from a kingdom of darkness into a kingdom of light. It's being translated from one. So, when we say they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they loved not their own life unto death, the, the work on the cross, the blood of the Lamb, is that which gives identity. It's that which speaks to propitiation. So that we are now seen by God <clears throat> in Christ. He sees us and that becomes our identity. So, yes, that is a weapon. The weapon is that the enemy cannot lie to you about who you are. That once you know who you are, you stand in, in that authority. You stand in that identity. You stand as a son of God, no longer as one subject to the rule of the enemy. And as we spoke of, in translating from the kingdom of darkness, God has all power and authority by which he guarantees our safety and uh, he uh, guarantees that we will be unhindered and unintimidated um, by the, the enemy. He has no hold on us. He doesn't have any ability to harass us. And so that is in your identity and that is in your salvation. Your salvation is that you have now been translated into his kingdom where he, the king, secures your provision and your protection by your identity in him as being uh, of the citizenry, citizenry, citizenship that you have in heaven. I hope that explains that without taking too much time. If I was Sam, and sometimes <laughs> sometimes I wish I could be, but if I was Sam, I would probably take a, the good, whole time. a good hour yeah. to answer that question. Um, it's fun. Uh, Kerwin, but I want to kind of just give some people um, a chance so that we don't just yeah. stay on one, uh, one question. And then, you, I mean, you can always address it more when you guys do a, a session together, you and Crow in the chat. Uh, Juwan's next question is, this is regarding Sam's current affairs. Uh -huh. Can anyone born of the Spirit of God be a herald, even if they are not a pastor, but they are used as messengers? So, there, um, there are different levels. Is that Juwan? Yes. Okay. There are different levels, Juan, of um, being, being a, a messenger. So, and, and just a messenger isn't necessarily a pastor. I want to say that in no uncertain terms. So those who bring the secrets of heaven into earth, those sent ones that I refer to as apostles, they are not pastors. Um, I would never call someone that is a true apostle a pastor because a pastor is a shepherd. A pastor is one of grace of shepherding, um, which is, yeah, and, 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 and a true apostle can, can operate in, in all, all the graces. Um, they can shepherd and they can teach and they can prophesy and all, all that, but um, that is the level in which God brings secrets of heaven into the earth. But when you have become one who owns the truth, when you hear the message, when you receive the message, you yourself become a messenger. Now, um, by, by the same authority that the, the sent one, the apostle, receives it from, from God. 
um, from heaven um, under the authority of Christ, when it becomes truth to you, I think Sam has, has mentioned this before, then you own it. When you own it, it's yours. And where God has then given you a sphere of influence. Remember, apostles' sphere of influence is within the church to bring and establish within the church um, not just doctrine, but uh, the, the, the understanding of the kingdom of God and what God is bringing into the earth. Uh, the, the authority is not, for instance, in the realms of politics or whatever, even though they might impact that. It is in the church that they are the messengers to the church. Now, those that receive the, that message, whether you be a father or whatever your, your sphere of influence is, you then own that message and you become a herald, so to speak, of that message, provided that your life is, pure, is, is, is refined by God, that what you speak and what you live is not a contradiction. So once you align yourself with the Word of God and you become a carrier of the message, not just a speaker, not just the one speaking the message, but a carrier of the message, then you become a messenger uh, yourself in the spheres of influence that God has given you. Might be a mother to your children, even might be to your workforce, might be to the spiritual sons God has given you. Okay, Joseph Charles asks, how do you find the mood of people when you go outside in your area? In general, South Africans are more positive than we think. Yeah, well, it depends on the day. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, um, Joseph. Joseph, it's it's <laughs> very difficult to tell because all it needs is um, is a spark. Mm -hmm. As we can see, I guess if you were to say a couple of weeks ago. Um, two, a week ago, a week or a little more ago in America, you would have said, well, it looks like everyone's kind of doing well. Everyone's happy with, with the, the COVID-9 regulations and it's being eased. And, um, but all it took was, was one spark of um, injustice. I'm talking about um, George Floyd, that, that there are cities, entire cities that are burning as people are just gone crazy. And so, yeah, it's, you know, Scripture says when, when they say, peace, peace, suddenly destruction will come upon them. There is no ways. In this earth, in this world, in the systems of this world, that they will know peace. Mm -hmm. So, um, what people carry on their faces doesn't reflect real, uh, really, what is going on in their hearts, what is churning about mm -hmm. them, what are the cares of this world that are um, so heavy on them. And there might be a temporary sigh of relief if we can all go and exercise whatever time we want during the day on Monday. But um, that's not to speak to really what's going on in the heart. The only true peace will come um, in, the, in the body of Christ, in the church, when uh, the Prince of Peace is ruling and he's destroyed the authority of the enemy to cause chaos. Okay, Juan has another one. This is question three of five. Juan, you're muy dumb. <laughs> you should just message me. <laughs> God speaks about Jesus being the right hand. Is that all authority given to him through the Father's will? Mm. Yeah, it doesn't speak of Jesus being the right hand. It speaks of Jesus being at the right hand, which is a positional authority. So, if you go through Sam's sessions, particularly now in these last few that he's been releasing in the last 
and gets eight so far. You will see, and it will become evident, no, sorry, that cookie was good. <laughs> it will become evident that God does not have a physical form. God is not contained in any physical form. So God does not have a right hand. He does not have a hand. He doesn't have a body. No eye has ever seen God. No eye ever will see God, except in a representative form through through sun. So when it speaks of that, and, and, and I know it gets heavy going as Sam starts speaking about these things, about the throne, but ultimately what what you need to see is the position of authority and what God is raising up. So yes, it is all about um, authority. Right hand sp speaks of a position of authority. Does that... Yes, I'm just checking. There's a few more. Uh, Giovanni's only got two more. There haven't mm. been new questions. Okay. Um, no, where did it go? Just, okay, number four. Still relating to blockage removal, the double-minded man that can't receive anything. Please explain more. So, there, there is a mind to the soul, and there is a mind to the spirit. Remember, your, your, your spirit and soul are kind of like a, a hand in glove. What is true of your your soul it has um, the spirit equivalent so you have a mind to the soul you have a mind to the spirit if you are the mind to the soul takes information in through your senses and then tries to figure out what is real the mind to the spirit receives revelation by the spirit from god as to what is real now, you are designed by God that your soul should blindly follow the lead of the Spirit. But if you are living soulishly and you are influenced by that which you observe and take in by your senses and try and reason it out by the mind to the soul, and that determines what you do and how you think, and then now and then you want to allow God to speak to your spirit. Uh, that is a double-minded man. As a man that is not led by the spirit, mm -hmm. but is um, carnal. So it is a carnal Christian, if you want. Because it's someone that is says, I'm born of the spirit, but I'm living by soulish mindsets much like the world and um, you must not think that you can receive anything from god because god does not speak through the soul he does not speak through reason he speaks through your spirit by revelation mm -hmm. uh, i hope that answers that real i don't quickly. think number five was a question because he just says the man that is dead dead of the spirit even though he is born from the spirit of god he is dead spiritually and there was no question mark, so I don't know if that was a statement or a question. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'm not quite sure what. Uh, me what either. Saying. I, okay. I don't know. Are there other questions? I haven't seen any others. Wow! No, really, there's a lot of people saying things here. Yeah, but they're just saying. They're, what do they say? Well, that was the mood question. I asked if there was any more questions. Juan says, "Thank you for answering my questions." Oh, here's Karen. Oh. Curran said, I was talking to Lauren about how awesome your kids are. How did you do it? This, this is true. <laughs> this is true. I have the most awesome children. Right from my eldest. Down to our youngest. Asher, who's, who's 27 now and in America. I'm so proud of him. Um, he just had to make a stand now in his workplace. Where he, um, oh, I have a message about He had a good too. position, and um, uh, management position, and uh, the the authorities in the in the company were violating uh, 
principles. That of, they themselves said that these are our principles of yeah, how our company is run. Of ethics and, mm -hmm. and of, of standards. And uh, he stood up and he said, No. Um, I'm not prepared to live in hypocrisy that we declare, because he's part of management, declare these are our standards, but we don't live by them. Mm -hmm. So I'm very proud of it. All my children are very principled, very principled, yeah. <laughs> um, which, is, which is a good thing. It means that uh, they've, here's the deal, here's the secret, um, Kerwin, how do you do it? First of all, I grew up being a pastor's kid pastor's child so mm -hmm. in america they're called preacher's kids pk pks um very few in my generation very few pks ended up serving god most of them rebelled as soon as they could just dif disappeared the ones that made it like we did are the ones who had parents who had integrity. And this is integrity. Integrity means what you say and what you do has to be the same thing. You mm -hmm. can't say one thing and live a different life. So, and there's a lot of, a lot of reasons people can give a lot of excuses. But when someone's children takes them to court... Uh, I have question marks immediately. I mean, I have question marks immediately if, if your children are accusing you of, of certain things and, and you've not established um, a relationship whereby they can say what my parents talk about is what they live. What they preach and what they speak about is what they live. So... Firstly, if you don't want to cause your children to be rebellious, because as soon as they're old enough, as soon as they can get out of the house and get out from under your control, they will rebel. If you've imposed on them a, a religious system of preaching something, but they see a different thing lived out. Uh, that's very true even for um, how Charlotte and I's relationship has to look. And I think I've spoken to many of you about this um, before. It's no secret. Charlotte and I, uh, in our relationship, were in, in real trouble. We were in a... And, and we realized we are in trouble when <clears throat> both my eldest children at that stage said that they don't want to get married. Yeah, they told me and... I only told Peter when we were in counseling, and he was like, what? <laughs> no, it was before. Yeah, it was before we went too, to counseling yeah. almost as a result yeah. of that. But mm -hmm. Because what they were seeing, and, and in short, we weren't playing nice. We weren't fighting nicely. We were really um, responding and acting in the soul in, in all of our conflicts. And so the children saw this and said, well, we don't think we want to get married. So that was a wake-up call for us to say, in this one area, the area of marriage, um, we can't talk about something but live something differently. We've got to come in line and live the standard of God if we want to pass it on to our children. And so, by God's grace, uh, we have. And um, my son's engaged, that same son is engaged and very excited to be married to uh, Elanda probably next year this time. So uh, all that to say, uh, Kerwin, you've got to be real. You've got to be authentic. You've got to have integrity in, in the message of the kingdom that we speak, the mm -hmm. principles that we speak, we have to live because you can fool everyone, but you can't fool your children. I mean... Oh, they see it. They'll see it clean through you. can you. fool mm -hmm. just about everyone in the congregation as a pastor or whatever. You can't fool your children. If your children don't believe it, if they don't see something that's worth living, then, then you failed. And it's called hypocrisy. And that's 
that's one of the things that exasperate. You know, you're not to exasperate your children, Scripture says. One of the things that exasperate children is when they see a display of authority, your pseudo-authority, in church circles, but they see a powerless life in terms of living it um, in, in practice. They don't see the power of God at work in your life, transforming you and um, renewing your mind. So that's one thing. The other one is, of course, um, Kerwin, the consistency. I think I spoke to you and others about it. Not that your little one is, she's still so young, but consistency in, in no, uh, for you it's very applicable in discipline now at this stage because it's, uh, discipline has got to do with um, consistency. When you say something, you follow through. You don't say, if you do that, I will, if you do that again, I will, and whatever you threaten them with, I'm going to take away your privileges or whatever. Um, if you do that again, and then they just do it again, and then you say, if you do that again. They're like, oh, please. <laughs> um, then they know my parents are liars. They actually don't follow through. Yeah. If you say, if you get um, good marks, if you get 80% in school, I'll buy your bicycle. Then they also know, well, my parents are liars. They don't discipline me when they say. They won't reward me when they say. So consistency. And, and with discipline, the mm -hmm. toughest thing with consistency is, especially when fathers come home from work, you don't feel like dealing with all that nonsense. And now you have to discipline. You just want to let it slide. Ugh, I get the chance for it. I can't see for it. I get the list now for it. So just let it just slide today. That. It's the worst thing you can do. That inconsistency is, mm. is, is confusing. You have to not only establish boundaries, but you have to maintain the boundaries. Mm -hmm. And your word has to be your bond consistent yeah. discipline even when you don't love it when you don't feel like it because you lost energies so equal amounts of discipline 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 mm -hmm. and love lots oh. of love i hug and kiss my children all the time and tell them that you love them mm -hmm. words of life words of love words of encouragement hands that touch and hug and uh, active commitment to see God's mm -hmm. purpose fulfilled in their life. I, I think, we, and Peter's speaking from the father's side, but I think from the mom's side, um, it's hard to <clears> always <throat> agree with your husband because sometimes you're like, nah, 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 you know, what does he think he's doing and all this type of stuff. And if the kids see you mumbling and grumbling behind your husband's back, then they know they can create, kids are smart. They know that, oh, mom doesn't agree with dad, so I'll just go to mom and she'll say yes or whoever the slightly softer person is. And that is something as a mom is you don't divide the, the authority. You don't divide the stand that your husband's saying. So even if you don't agree with it, you go to your husband and you speak to him and say, babes, I don't agree with this, but I will support you in your decision. And it's a tough thing to do as a mom because you, I like, I don't like conflict. I don't like any of that type of stuff. But I've seen what happens before when I used to let the kids come to me, and I would, I would be the buffer. I would be the, you know what I'm saying. And and it would sometimes create a bit of a distance between them and Peter because they knew mom will agree with me, and so I'm, you know. And the devil uses those little things like that to create a divide between you and your husband. So it's important, ladies, that you support your husband in the discipline, not discipline and anger, but discipline when your husband's calm, discipline when he's, dis, you know, when he's putting like a restriction or even if it is his banking, but you agree with what he's doing and make sure that he doesn't discipline in anger. Um, that's another big thing because, I mean, that can do more damage than anything emotionally. But when my kids realize we can't divide and conquer, and they realized I was going to stay and agree with Peter, then it, it reinforces that. Then they know, okay, this is not a divided house. This is a house that's going to stand. And it took them a while to fig figure out that we were actually together again, and it's made a difference. So um, I know Alyssa doesn't always like it when, when I stand firm with Peter, and she 
tries to finagle away, but then I have to remind her, nope, your dad said that, so, you know, I, I can't change that, and I'm not going to change that. This is what your dad said. So just be sure, ladies, you don't go and divide the house behind your husband's back. You support him in his decision, and um, and and it then your husband knows he can trust you. He knows that, you know what, we're a team, and they, they need to know that. They honestly do. Hi, uh, Tsipo. Uh, Tsipo has a, has a question. Um, I've always thought that the gates were always meant as the government of the city, the elders, for example, Ruth chapter 4. Is it wrong to think of the gates of the hell, the of gates hell. of hell Jesus spoke about as a government of the kingdom of darkness that Paul refers to in Ephesians 6 <clears throat> that will not prevail against us? That's okay. A good one. Yeah, good good that. question. Simple. <laughs> one of my sons. So, by the way, um, before I answer your question, um, those of you of the household, my spiritual house, Sam is um, addressing us tonight at six, six o'clock. Um, addressing the household, he does so just about every three weeks now. If um, if you're not part of that and you don't know the the Zoom password contact your spiritual father and um, they will give it to you this is obviously for the household of sam so yes um Tepo. so the thing is um uh, Thamu naidu uh, uh, spoke to me of this this interesting concept of of the walls of a city um he he, he proposed that the walls of the city are established are, are apostles, are the, the foundations that apostles lay. So the walls of a city are fortified and built by the strength of apostles. And the gates of a city are the elders, the overseers, the, the, the overseers who watch over the souls that um, allow what must come into the city. Um, so that's in the city of God. So when it speaks of gates, it does speak of um, authority to allow um, what may enter and what may pass through. Um, in, in this case, um, we are not looking to, um, to go and live in the gates, inside the gates of the kingdom of darkness. We are looking to plunder we are looking to plunder. So, um, Scripture speaks of principalities, powers, mights, dominions. So there are there are rankings in uh, the demonic, in the spiritual realm, rankings of authority that um, need to be need to come become against. So, for instance, we know with um, with uh, Daniel when he was praying that. Um, the arch archangel was um, hindered from coming soon because he had to get through certain principalities over Persia. Um, now, of course, um, I do believe, I do believe that within certain, even geographical cities, there are um, principalities over certain regions. And I do believe that these uh, it is not for foot soldiers to overthrow um, kings. I think uh, even in terms of what we did in missions in the past, we were on very dangerous ground to send youngsters into mission fields <laughs> over which there are principalities, um, as if uh, a foot soldier is going to overthrow kings. Um, I do believe that's where apostolic anointing comes that's where apostolic grace comes that um, God gives certain uh, authority to overcome principalities whereas for instance the 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 ruling spirits within your household for instance you are the authority God has given you authority over your household so when there's someone in your family when there's someone in your family that uh, needs to be rescued from the kingdom of darkness, those gates cannot prevail against you 
because you are the authority over your family as the father, as the priest of your house. Those gates that keep your son or family members captive cannot prevail against you when you come in the authority that God has given you. But he's not given you authority over the city. Uh, that li- happens on, 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 on a different level of, of authority. So, yes, it does represent the gates of hell, do represent um, authorities. But there are different ways in which that happens. There are gates of hell within your families. There's gates of hell within your neighborhood. There's gates of hell within the city, national and global. And uh, ultimately... Um, God is not going to give us for now um, the uh, he's not calling us for now to overthrow the systemic gates that are coming into the the earth that will happen God will allow that for a certain thing and when they are to be overthrown God will have raised his church to a place where those gates too will be overthrown, even the systematic controls of the spirit of this world. Um, but not for now. It's clear that there'll be a time even now when, um, when the church is not to, not to try and tear down those gates, but um, the church is first to become um, a fortified city, a, a, a city on the hills, it's first to become a mature church to be an accurate representation of God before God's going to use us in that time to um, to be coming against those gates. But certainly for the gates of the people in your lives that God has given you influence over your relationships, your families, those are gates that we know we have authority uh, to deal with. No, no new I hope that wasn't, <laughs> wasn't too cryptic. No. I hope it wasn't too cryptic. But yeah, it's for you... you you're on, you're on track with the understanding. Obviously, it's not physical gates. Mm. None of this is a physical battle. It's a spiritual battle. And one thing we must understand, that when we're in the realm of the spiritual things, um, the rules of physics don't apply. <laughs> it's not the same as approaching it with... Um, a soulish mind that only understands reason and we want to kind of figure things out by what we understand in our physical world. The things of the spirit are, um, they, they, they function under, uh, by different dimensions. Mm. And I think as, as we take a stand, and I mean, it was pretty evident um, <clears throat> when, when I look at Asher, now Asher is our eldest and he's been working for several, for a few years in, in a local um, uh, restaurant in, in Alabama. And he worked from the bottom up. I mean, he started as a waiter, then became a key, then he became a bartender, then, uh, no, bartender, then a key, which was over, it, and a key is just, he was over the shifts. And they lock up. And, and they lock up and stuff. And then he got promoted to doing the, the um, Manage. management course. And he's been a manager. And I am so grateful for this stand and I, that he took. And he even he asked us, Mom, what do I do? And I said, you know, you need to write. And this is before I let Peter know. I mean, I, and I encouraged him. I said, you know, pray about it. And, but when you write your letter, include the things that you feel that they have violated, whether, you know, in the sense of business, in the sense of what they stand for, and explain to them why. Um, because they need, and Peter said exactly the same thing. So when he he sent me a message this morning um, saying, Mom, not only did my COO, and I didn't know what that meant, it's Chief Operating Officer. Officer. So they're second <coughs> in command. Of the franchise. It's a, it's no, a, it's of a company, babes. I mean, it's a company that's... It's a, it's a that's major a, corporation. Within the, within so the CEO of cities. the company, not of just their, 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 their region, but of the actual company, read the letter, reported it to the CEO. Everyone in the region has read it, as well as the staff and the management. So now they all know what Asher has said. And um, he said, Mom, you know, I have resigned. He said, but I just think it's interesting that 
the stand that I took has sent, it, it's it's basically kind of shaking everybody. And I said, but Asher, that's what it is. And that's how it is as a believer. When you stand in the identity of who you are and you stand up for injustices and God's given you the voice and the testimony of who you are in that company, what you say will create waves. And that's how it is for us. It was such a beautiful picture for me when I read it this morning was that that's how it is for us as being sons of God. That the stand that we take in the in the job, in the arena, in whatever area it is where we have our sphere of influence, as we stand up and take a stand, prophetically what's going to happen is that as we take a stand, it's going to reverberate and it's going to shake the gates of hell. It's going to shake them. When you operate by the Spirit. When you're operating by the Spirit, not by your flesh. It has to operate by the Spirit. And as a result, that is why we will see the miracles. We will see the different things happening. It won't be because of us, but it will be because of the purity of the message that people are seeing being um, evidenced through our lives and how God is going to come through. This is going to be the greatest awakening of people who have walked away from God. They're going to come back to the Father because of this. They've been searching for so long. And this is why God is taking this time to basically prune us, to to throw more compost on the heap, to enrich us, to cause our roots to go deeper, for us to grow, so that when we take a stand, when we come exactly into alignment with the timing and purpose for our life that God's going to give us to do, it's going to be amazing. And we're going to be radiant lights. We're going to be the city of a hill. There's nothing that we will do that won't be influenced and won't be directed by God and, and the Holy Spirit. So it's an exciting time to be in. Isn't she lovely? I love you. So it's also <laughs> going to be a time of great falling away because those yeah. who have just been connected to religion and religious institutions and yeah. philosophies of men and doctrines of demons that have so infiltrated much of the religious church um, they uh, they get a push against because the spirit of the world in them is going to uh, push up against mm. oh, the yeah. emerging oh, of yeah. the true kingdom of God and there will be a falling away because they will they will establish dependence on systems of this world that God is going to shake mm -hmm. so as much as there is a, a a clarification there is um, um, what's what when my wife cooks what you call it when you reduce something to reducing it yeah so <laughs> so something so yeah. when you reduce something it becomes less but it's much purer it's form. richer it's a much mm. more potent condensed you're condensing yeah it's so the, it's a much yeah. more potent form so even though there is a, a cleaning out of how so to mm -hmm. speak there will be a falling away, but it will be a falling away and what will remain will be a much purer church, a much, it will be a reduction, it will be the essence of the nature and character of God that is it's starting be to be revealed in the true church. Mm -hmm. Exciting times, exciting times, but this is what shaking is for, this is what yeah. fire is for, this is what... Learning to live by the Spirit yeah. is all about. This is the war. This is mm -hmm. the war. The war is um, the battle. Uh, the, 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 the violence is about um, God cleaning out the church, yeah. turning up the heat, so to speak, the fires to purge and purify so that which remains mm -hmm. is, is, is a pure and accurate, more accurate than ever before version of the nature and character of God. And just just a side note, and I have I have relatives that obviously aren't in the season. I mean, my very my sister, well meaning, she loves the Lord, and and she really does. She had a whole change of heart several years ago, and and unfortunately, she's in a denomination that is so strict and so rigid. And a few family members that aren't in this season, they're not flowing where you you can't save them. You can't force them. You can't bring them into the season. Just be patient. Be pa it's their journey. I love it. It is their journey to discover. And as you radiate who God is in your life, what's going to happen? It's going to create, a, it's going to create hopefully a hunger within them 
to pursue that which you're living. So don't try to save them. Don't try to chase after them. It will happen in their timing. And there's going to be a period where God's going to allow those that aren't in the season to rectify themselves. But that's in another time. We don't have to force them. So don't do that. Let it go. Be at peace. God knows of those things. You don't have to struggle with that. We've gone long. Let me just end off with this. While Shard was saying that, I was thinking of <laughs> this generation of young people. Look, there's no secret that um, this younger generation has no um, loyalty to church institutions oh, and, not at all. and stuff. So to them already, that religious stuff is a bunch of crock. Yeah? I mean, they, they, they place no value in it. It's got no... I already used a different one. So... <laughs> <laughs> this generation of young people, Sam spoke to, to, uh, to many of them last night, and my sons were, really were part of that, mm -hmm. is the generation God is preparing for, for war. Yeah. And the, the thing is, just like even our family members and stuff that are part of religious and church institutions, the world as a whole is seen the 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 fakeness of just religion and, and church institutions being fake and just they're catching up with what the young people already saw. This is not real, this is just fake. It's just religious jargon. What's happening is when the true church emerges, the hunger for the real thing is going to be so evident to this young generation and to the world that they will have the act, the standard that they can, when their world falls apart and when the systems of this world fall apart and everything that they put their hope in crumbles, there will be a standard raised up by God, the true church. And it is this generation of young people. Joanne, some of you were there when Sam spoke yesterday and um, heard him challenge that this is not... Uh, we, we're making no, um, this is not Akshayim, our young people. This is a, a definite call to say this generation of young people are going to be the generation that will usher in. They will probably be the generation that will see the return of the Lord. But that means they will become the generation that sees the true church emerge, yes. the purity of Christ and the nature and character of God being formed in the church. And so the old religious nonsense, the stuff that the world long time ago said that's fake. This generation of young people has seen that's fake. God is raising up the true church, the true church. And because it is the genuine thing, um, God is going to bring into it young people that are willing to give their lives for that which is real. So God is raising up that which is real and he's dealing with all the fake stuff as he's cleaning out house. All right, so that's our time for today. We actually took... We, we were really long, like an hour and a half. We oh took 30 minutes longer than, <laughs> than we might, but um, it was good, a good, good to see you all. Yeah. Thank you to my wife to make me look so good, doesn't <laughs> She make me look so good. Oh, funny thing. I'll tell you. There's a cookie. Ash, Ash, and, I only Ash, had one. Ash, wrong son. David and I were at Spa this week. And, you know, you have to wear those masks. So the mask is covering my face. And um, so we're standing in line. It was a long line. It was just before Spa was going to close. But I thought it was the funniest thing. So there's an an older lady in front of me. I, I thought she was maybe in her 50s like me. Not a big deal. They actually go and tell her to go ahead. So David and I are standing there, and this guy comes up to me, and he's like, he's like looking, trying to figure out, you know, how old I am. All he sees is gray hair. All he sees is gray hair, and he says, "Ma'am, you can go ahead." And I said, "Are you sure?" And he's like, "No, ma'am, you you need to go ahead." I said, "Are you absolutely sure?" He couldn't see you he, don't have wrinkles. He couldn't figure out if I was 60, 60 odd or not. So he let David and I go through, and the people at the head of the line were so angry, and I'm like, "Listen, it wasn't me. I said it was a gentleman." The, the worker behind it told us to go through, but I thought that was really if funny. If she didn't have a mask on, they would see her <laughs> skin is so beautiful that she hardly got any wrinkles. So apparently I'm now 63 or 60-odd. I mean, I'm, I'm a senior. <laughs> and I'm younger than her. I'm younger than her. All right. Um,
Oh, the Queen's birthday tomorrow in New Zealand. What Queen? The Eng Eng British Queen or New Zealand Queen? Yeah, we get to enjoy a long weekend. We've had we've had about two months of long weekend, uh, Colin. So I think we don't know that it's long weekend. All right, God bless you. We'll see you all soon. Uh, those of you of our spiritual house, um, of the household of Sam, um, feel free to join us tonight. Um, six o'clock and contact your spiritual fathers yeah. for that um, for the zoom password and the transcript will be made ready at, probably at the end of this week or end of the week or beginning of next week however long it takes me to do it depends how long it is sometimes <laughs> he speaks three hours then it minutes. takes a while all righty god bless you bye everyone See you well. goodbye Delhi. god bless you bye bye